Has your sex life fallen to the same old dull routine? Then you need to try Like a Kitten's exciting sex box. You get to choose one item out of each of their six categories, toys, beauty products, lubes and cleansers, games, sexy accessories, and lingerie. Go to likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout or click the link in the episode's description. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. And today I have somebody who I've been trying to get into the studio for a while, somebody that a lot of my Patreon members were very excited about. And so I'm absolutely thrilled to bring you the one and only prolific male performer, Dread. Hi. I, you know, I could have thrown more adjectives in there, but I thought I would just let you speak for yourself. Well, I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I'll say it's definitely a pleasure to be here, finally. Yes. After uh, quite some time. Yes. Um, I I was, um, I had bugged you before. And I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay, so you did get my email, you just didn't respond. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, no. You, you know what? The um, my, my Gmail which is the email that I should check like every day Mm -hmm. is actually the email that I just kind of check every now and then. Right. You know? So, um, that's probably the reason why I didn't, um, catch on to it the first time. That's okay. It's okay. I mean, my feelings were a little bit hurt, but I got over it. (laughs) (laughs) And then, uh, we were supposed to interview last week, but we had in LA of all places, we had torrential, rain and i just knew it was going to be a disaster Th- that day reminded me of south florida which is where i lived for many years yeah so to see that kind of day here in southern california was a trip for me you yeah know what i mean but yeah just those kind of days rainy days how long have you been here well i moved out here technically about uh three and a half years ago i'd mm-hmm. say And, um, you know, prior to that, I was a a South Florida guy Mm -hmm. for many years. Um, That's tough down there. I don't know how familiar you are with South Florida, but... Not terribly. I went to a show, the Night Moves Awards show in Tampa once and got wasted and was in a blackout for like three days. So (laughs) don't remember that much about it. All right. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's like a party, you know, kind of like party party town, Mm -hmm. so to speak. And I spent many years down there, and I got my partying in. And you know, once I moved out here, um, I just started to kind of put everything together. You know. Yeah, yeah. We all got to grow up sometime. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I pushed it. I pushed it way past the my limit that I should Me not too. have pushed it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I, I relate so much. Jeez. But hey, here we are, and we got here our we shit are. together. And it's a pleasure to be here. It's so nice to meet you. I've heard like so much about you. We were kind of we were talking a lot before the interview started, right. saying like how we've heard each other's names sure. so often. Um, we use the same makeup artist. I know a lot, yes. Rosalinda. She's great. She is great. Love her. Yeah, she's amazing. Just great energy. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I feel better uh, once I see her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, she's she's lovely, and she's one of those. She's kind of a rarity, too, because not only is she, like, incredibly good at her job, mm-hmm. every girl loves her makeup, right, right, which right. is so important. Yeah. Um, but she's also, I think for you, she probably does, like, the come and go. She does the makeup in the morning and then leaves, right? She doesn't stay for the scene. No, she does not. Right. Yeah. So for me, she stays all day. Oh, okay, okay. Because I have to do multiple looks most of the time. And You know what? I'll tell you this. She. I was thinking, I was like, there was somebody else who was telling me, talking mm-hmm. to me about you. Uh, really good. And I couldn't remember, and it was her. Yeah. Rosalinda. Yeah. She said, you got to get with Holly. You got to do it. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, we've worked together for a long time. Wow. But she's great. She's like one of those people that not only, like, she'll help you. Right. She'll, like, slate for me. Wow. While we're shooting. Like, she'll do, she won't just do makeup. She'll do, like, whatever else right. needs to be done. She's so helpful. Yeah, no, she is. She's and it's absolutely just, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, let's talk a little bit about how you got into this industry. You started off um, as a swinger, right? Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting because those two things kind of collided at the same time. Mm -hmm. I had started to get into the whole lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. 
uh, right when I started to shoot like my first, uh, you know, porn scenes. Mm -hmm. We're talking circa 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things that um, porn was something I'd always had a lot of interest in. Mm -hmm. I discovered it at a very, very early age, seven years old. Wow. Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, it was my father's stash that I kind of, you know, me and uh, my brother and sister somehow got into my parents' bedroom. And I knew my, my father had the, the freak DNA in him, mm -hmm. even at that age. I knew he was into all kinds of different things. Yeah. So we somehow got into my, our parents' bedroom and we went on this, this mission to just find whatever we could. And my brother went left, my sister went right, I went straight under the bed, there's the, the shoe box, pull out the shoe box, uncover it, and there it was. Yeah. And ever since then, I had this fixation. So, you know, we fast forward up until around 2008, 2009, I was working uh, just a regular nine to five down in uh, Miami. And, you know, I was always kind of like, you know, if the right situation ever presented itself for porn, I would do it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at that time I was like, I had something in me. I think like most guys have it in them. You know, man, I, I, I know I could do that. Now, you know, just give me the, the, the right, you know, situation. Maybe I could put a mask on, hide my identity. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I'm um, working at my regular job and I'm listening to um, satellite radio and it was the um, Howard Stern show. And he's just talking to this guy and they're talking about this contest they're having uh, for a well-endowed guy with personality, the guy they used to have who turned out it was Shane Diesel. And um, they were looking for the new Blackzilla, who, was, mm -hmm. who the character was. Mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar with any of it. Um, but they were like, look, if you feel like you got what it takes, um, you know, take a, some pictures of your junk, send it in. And I'm sitting there just doing data entry, and I'm like, this is the shot. This is what I've been waiting on. This has got to be it. So well, I went into the bathroom and chubbed up and took a few shots and hoped, well, you know, we'll see. Yeah. They called me the next day, and he said, you're the guy. Yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> I bet they called you the next day. I'm not surprised at all. He said, you're the, I was like, are you sure? He said, no, you are the guy. We've been looking at dicks all day <laughs> and you're the one. So I was like, oh my God. So at the time I said, well, now I'm a little nervous. You know, of course I wanted it, but now the opportunity's there. And I'm like, well, what, what's this going to consist of? Mm -hmm. Well, we want to fly you out to LA, see how you do, uh, you know, um, in front of the camera and then um, if you do well, then we're going to uh, go back on the Howard Stern show and we're going to, you know, anoint you as the new guy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I was like, I'm down with the fly out to L.A. part, but I still wanted to stay anonymous. You know, yeah. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. That leap. So I said, you know what? I appreciate it, but um, I have to turn it down. Mm -hmm. He said, you sure? I said, yeah. So he would check in. Uh, maybe this went on for about two weeks. And I wasn't breaking because I was like, there's no way, man. I'm not ready for that yet. So then he called me up and he said, look, forget about the, the whole show thing. Let's just fly you out and see how you do. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. And I thought it was just going <laughs> to, I'm just thinking about it. I thought it was just going to be a, um, like a tryout kind of thing. I didn't know I was walking onto a set with like all these people and everything. I was like, all these cars are here for, for me. He's like, yeah, man, we're getting ready to do this. And I was like, oh my God. So when you say you thought it was a tryout, like how many, like what exactly were you envisioning? I was envisioning a girl and, 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 and a guy and me and uh, like a, you know, just a regular setting. Um, and let's see how you do kind okay. of thing. Like a casting couch thing. Almost. Right. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I didn't know I was walking into the fire. Yeah. So that being said, I did it and um, it was a struggle, man. I, yeah. <laughs> it was I mean, a struggle. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about that first experience because what you guys have to do is so incredibly difficult and I think yeah. a lot of men don't realize it until right. they're in that situation. Right. Um, I've brought this up a lot on my podcast and some of my 
long-term listeners may be sick of hearing about it, sure. but too bad. Uh, I was the host of a Playboy TV show called Adult Film School, and the whole premise was taking amateur couples who had never had sex oh. in front of the camera before right. and then like making a professional sex tape with them with a huge right. crew, oh my like God. 30 people, massive production, and all these guys would come in so cocky. Mm. You know, I'm a swinger. Right. I'm in the lifestyle. I've had right. sex in front of loads of people at a party. Sure. Da 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 da. But then put them in the set. Yeah. And it was like a totally different story. Oh, yeah. oh. So I saw that that yeah. crushing pressure. Yes. Over and over. Again. Oh, I could I could relate because um in my mind again, it was all coming together at the same time. The whole lifestyle thing, and of course with the lifestyle, a lot of the you know, the uh, boyfriends or the husbands, they want to capture it. Oh, it's just for our own personal use, mm -hmm. you know? But so, you know, they're taking pictures and doing video. And in my mind, I was figuring, well, I've kind of got that part down. Mm -hmm. Like, I can do my thing with somebody else in the room, mm -hmm. or so I thought. But once I got on that set, and there were multiple people, and the lights were bright, and the girls were, they were impatient, and I'm struggling, and I'm like, oh, God, maybe this isn't for me. You know yeah. what I mean? So I just barely got through that weekend. I remember it was a weekend, and we shot, I think, three scenes. And I struggled in each one. And um, I said, you know, maybe this isn't for me. You mm -hmm. know, it's not it is what I thought it was going to be. It's a little too difficult. There was no shame in it. Um, I was just like, nah, this ain't it. So um, that's how I got in, and that's also how I walked away from it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and as I walked away from it, um, for those years, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, I just really got heavily involved into the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then I got more confident and I got more, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just, people ask me, they'll say, um, you know, why did you leave it? And I, I just wasn't ready, you know, mm -hmm. for multiple reasons. But um, when I came back, I was ready. Mm. Now I'm like, all right, got the confidence. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. Let's get it. And, you know, thank God things happened the way they did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, you were like a single man in the lifestyle, yes. right? So you weren't, because swingers, I think most people usually think it's a couple swapping with other couples but sure. there are i know that women are called unicorns but are men called the same thing? well the, the 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 single guy in the lifestyle really is a dime a dozen you know yeah. especially nowadays it's almost as if the floodgates have officially been open i mean when i got in around 2008 um it just seemed like there were a handful of single guys who knew the role uh knew what it takes you know to be successful in it which is just really uh, all about performing well and, um, you know, respectful, mm -hmm. uh, punctual on time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so for me, that was like easy, you know. I was like, okay, I can, I think I can, I can do this for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so it just started. Um, there was a girl I was talking to and she, she mentioned it to me on a whim. She was like, you never do anything lifestyle? I was like, no way, that's not for me, you know. She's like, no, I think you would really like it. I think you'd do good at it. So... It started off and I just kept getting, you know, people were starting to request me more and it was like word of mouth. Hey, this guy down in Miami, you got to check him out. So, you know, it, it started out slow and then it just became this like my main thing mm -hmm. where I was like, I mean, I just overindulged with that, mm -hmm. you know, at, for years, <laughs> you know, and then it got to a point of where I said, you know, I felt like I climbed as high as I could on the mountain. And I, I had as much fun as I did, but I was like, you know, um, something's missing here. That monetary gain is missing. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Let's turn like a hobby into a career. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, you know, people would say it to me like in passing, why don't you do that? And I was like, no, 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 I'm happy just, you know, meeting up with these couples and fucking my brains out. And, mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, after a while, it definitely took its course. And I was like, all right, it's time to shift this into something else right and somebody i was talking to down in miami who if it wasn't for her i probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you um she said look you, you got to get back on the horse and and you know and get back into porn you know mm -hmm. I, said, ah, I did that that ship has sailed it's not for me no but it's different now you know you should really and so we went through this for like two months i didn't i wasn't familiar with social media anything 
She said, look, let me just make you a Twitter page. And she's like, I'm sure there are going to be some of your fans that remember you from years ago. They're still there. Let's see how it goes kind of thing. So I begrudgingly was like, okay, let's do it. And once she did that, she opened that Twitter page, everything just started happening as far as like, you know, studios. Hey, whoa, yeah, this guy Dread. Whoa, 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 oh, yeah, look, he's packing. You know, let's yeah. get him. And that's what started like the, the resurgence, if you will. Right, right. So back just a couple more questions about the swinging sure. lifestyle. So did you find that it was mostly like husbands wanted to watch you with their wives? Oof. Well, I got a little bit of everything. It was the um, husbands wanting to watch. Some would just sit there and observe. Um, some would say, hey, I want to participate. Do you mind? Um, and then it got to the point of where we'll fly you out. You know, here I am flying out to like Missouri, you know, or Skokie, Illinois, you know, all these weird places. I don't mean to say weird, but uh, places I wasn't used to, all for the sole purpose of Oh, here's my wife. Here's my girlfriend. You got you have a good yeah. time. You know what I mean? Right. And I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. But um, so it was it was a little bit of a little bit of everything. There, there were um, couples where they would say uh, the husband will say, uh, I'll send my wife down for the weekend, mm -hmm. you know, take good care of her, you know, which I, I did some of that. So I was like really all over the place with that whole thing. I yeah. really got into that going up. I didn't really go to the clubs a lot. Um, every now and then, but I was more of a, hey, we're coming down to South Beach. We're going to be staying at the Lowe's room to whatever. See you at 10. Okay, cool. You yeah. Know? What do you think the mentality behind that, the, the men in the relationship is? I just know that, you know, a lot of my listeners can't fathom the idea of, you know, when we talk about like dating and porn and like people having open relationships right. or sleeping with other people. And I think, especially think the swinging thing, they think like, I would never right. allow my girlfriend or wife to have sex right. with another man. Like that's crazy. Sure. Um, so emasculating that's, you know, disrespectful, right. whatever. So what do you think the mentality is for the men that request you to come have sex with their, you know what I think it is it, at least, or at least in the situations I was in, these were couples who were really um, engaged in making sure each other was happy, you know, and uh, whether it was the, the, the husband, the older husband, the younger uh, wife who just wanted to see their better half happy, mm -hmm. having fun. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, uh, having sex with a guy, a well endowed guy is what's making her happy. He's happy. Mm -hmm. So. All those situations, I've never seen the one where it was like, no way. I'm sure they, they're, they're out there. But the ones that I got involved with, it was all about just making their sex life, uh, you know, better, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, they would, that's why I never had a problem with the, um, you mind if we record? No, go ahead, do your thing. Mm -hmm. Because um, there would be couples that I would see again, and they'd say, man, we we watch this video every night, you yeah. know? And I'm like, wow, really? Yeah, we, we check it out all the time. And we, she still loves it. I love it. So, and I've had so many experiences like that, you know? So it was always a good, good thing. I mean, um, but I could definitely see how, you know, some guys would be, there's no way I'll have you having sex with another man, especially with me sitting there watching, never. So I could see it, but I never really encountered that. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I mean, sexuality is one of those things that is so varied and so different yeah. for so many people. And I think that a lot of men fall into that trap of ownership right. where they feel like their their wife is almost like their property. And yes. so, you know, she can't be defiled by another man. Right. Because she belongs to them. And that's just, I mean, my parents were swingers. Mm. Um, so, you know, and they are still together and, right. you know, have three children and very like healthy sure. family relations. So, and I met so many swingers doing that show that I mentioned earlier and just, you know, my time in the industry. And I have found that a lot of times these couples have like a really great sense of communication right. and like care for each other oh, that yeah. isn't necessarily present in other relationships yep. because they're so open, so open about making each other happy and even just talking about sex. Mm -hmm. So many people don't talk about sex. Right, right, right. You know, much less like to like explore different ideas of like what might make sure. each other happy. Yeah. I, I think of a lot of regular 
couples took a page out of the lifestyle handbook, I think uh, they would benefit from it. Because a lot of times, like you said, it's not really discussed that much. Mm -hmm. And the moment, you know, somebody thinks the other half is up to something, it opens up a whole can of crazy, mm -hmm. which is totally going on in the world nowadays. But I, yeah, no, I think that it would um, be advantageous for a lot of couples to kind of, because again, that openness, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it goes a long way with relationships. So, yeah, you know, I mean, you see so many people, you know, their relationships end and a lot of times it's yeah. fights over sex, you know, or, you know, a man cheating or a woman right. cheating. And, you know, it's just so often boils down to just like people not talking to each other yep. about what they want. Right. And then it kind of like claws its way to the surface in some unhealthy way. Sure. Um, okay, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room, a.k.a. Dred's penis, because <laughs> <laughs> clearly that needs to be discussed. Uh, so hang tight. We'll be right back. Going into a sex store can be overwhelming. You may spend hours browsing the shelves only to realize that you came home with stuff that you can't really use. Or maybe you forgot like one crucial ingredient. This is why Like a Kitten is so amazing because they let you build your own box so you can kind of choose your own adventure. You get to choose one item out of each of their six categories, toys, beauty products, lubes and cleansers, games, sexy accessories, and lingerie. What I love about this is that a portion of the proceeds go to charities that focus on women's empowerment, education, and health. So what are you waiting for? Go to likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout for 20% off your box plus free shipping. That's likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout or click the link in the episode's description. All right, so we're back. Um, so let's talk about... <laughs> I mean, I have to bring up your penis because that's like the one thing that everybody's kind of obsessed about. I mean, you have a very large penis. Have you like, I almost said, have you always had that? <laughs> I mean, clearly, yes, um, since you've been an adult. But like, did you, when did you kind of realize that your penis was maybe different from other people's penises? You know, it was late, late in life. Um, I thought... I thought every guy was packing what I had, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Know, that's the, the God's honest truth. So it wasn't until late in life and really um, not until like the whole lifestyle thing kicked off, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I knew it was um, slightly above average. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I, um, I didn't know it was, you know, as big. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and here's the thing that I want to throw this in really quick. Um, cause some people nowadays, there's so many different methods of doing things and people are having surgery and, and every now and then I'll see somebody go, you know, oh man, he, he, he had to have had something done. You know yeah. what I mean? He, he did something to it. And my thing is always, look, if I ever had the opportunity to have like a surgically, you know, repaired penis, it would be the most perfect straight penis with the perfect head and there would be no curve like I have to the left and it would just be perfect. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that whole idea is no, I've never had anything done. It's never been altered. Um, it's just, it's what I've had, you know, I guess I have to give credit to my, my, my father. You yeah. Know? And that's pretty much it. But it wasn't until like later on in life that I, you know, I knew, and it was really cemented going back to um, that whole, uh, taking a few pictures and sending it in mm -hmm. to those guys saying, that's what really did it. You know, yeah. I was like, wow, I didn't know, you know, because yeah. when the guy, and he, this is he, to quote him, he said, I've been looking at dicks all day and you're by far the guy. So yeah. Yeah. He rose to the top there Bro, quickly. <laughs> you know. Now you've said in the past that you've never measured your penis. Is that true? It is the God's honest truth. You know what I mean? Why? I, well, do you I mean, want to know? I, or do you I, not want to like just give like have this outrageous number that's going to shame everybody else? Well, no. You, you know what it is? I, I, I recall doing it many, many years ago. I think it was like a, a ruler, you know? And um, I just, you know, I didn't, 
until I got into porn, then I saw like how much emphasis is placed on <laughs> it's 15 inches. All of a sudden, it's not 15 inches. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not that big. Um, so I just always kind of kept it as you know, let people think what they want. You know, I know in my mind it was big, but I mean, I didn't. To this day, I think every day I get messages from people. Just how big is that monster? You know, I'm mm -hmm. like, look, I don't really know. I don't know. They don't believe me, you know, but it's the it's the God's honest truth. No lie. Um, and I just kind of what I would tell people, like when I was in a lifestyle, I would tell them it's 10 inches just to play it safe. And they would always laugh and go, oh, to play it safe, 10 inches. <laughs> OK, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's in that vicinity. Yeah, I would. It's probably a little bit more than that, but you it know. could be. I've heard there are people who have said, "Look, I've been I've been with a guy who had had a ten inch, and yours is way bigger, you know." And just I'm like, okay. So I always kind of leave it up to uh, the people to kind of you know speculate. Plus, it's kind of fun to me to hear mm -hmm. people go, "I bet it's like fourteen, maybe thirteen, maybe twenty. So. You should do one of those like raffle contests, you know, where they do one where like guess how many gumballs are in the jar. And if you guess correctly, you get a prize. Right. You should do like a whole thing, like guess how many inches Dred's penis is. And if you win, you get like Ooh. some kind of prize. Now that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And, 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 you know, really quick, there was one shoot I did where in the beginning, the girl had out a tape measure and um, she was like, wow, how big? And she put in a tape measure, but she never really put it, like lined it up perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. So just from that shoot, people were like, well, we saw when she had it up to you and they'll have like a, 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 a screenshot from the scene. And I'm like, oh my God, they're really <laughs> over the top with this, you know? So, yeah. You're like, but it, you don't feel like it was accurate because it wasn't straight and it wasn't no, the face. No, definitely so. was not accurate. Did but it sell you short then? It, it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, it may have sold me short, but there were people who, it was kind of like, aha, I told you, you know, and I'm like, oh God, yeah. yeah. So. Is it kind of like bizarre, this people's, everybody's like obsession with your penis? <sighs> um, I mean, I know that's like a big centerpiece of your career, but yeah. do you ever just get sick of people talking about it or like asking you about it i mean it is it is I've, I've gotten so used to it it is what it is but i i always like especially the 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 attitude i had in porn i i tried to translate i mean in uh, the lifestyle i tried to translate into porn which is when you see me it's more than that it's mm -hmm. not just about the dick you know like because you know a lot of times in those uh swinger situations Part of the deal is um, socializing and just mm -hmm. talking and getting to know each other, you mm -hmm. know, before it's actually, you know. So my thing was always, it's not just about the dick. I'm a pretty versatile guy. I like to consider myself, you know, someone of having, uh, you know, reasonable intelligence, you know. So it's not just about that. I don't want everybody to be fixated on that. But of course, in porn, a lot of it comes down to that, which is, it's fine by me. I could, I could roll with it. Right. You know? But I mean, being a porn insider, I've... You know, like I mentioned earlier, I've heard so many people just rave about you and about how you're so wonderful to work with and you're so um, nice and you're gentle and you're considerate. And these are all things that I think a lot of fans don't don't think about, you right. know, because they see your huge penis and they right. think, oh, these girls, they must be like yeah. dying and like don't want to have sex with you. And oh, he's, yeah. you know what I mean? But every girl has been like, yeah, he's big, but he's so gentle and like right. he's really considerate and, you know, like he makes it work. Sure. Uh, well, I do my best. And, and a lot of that has come from, again, my years, you know, swinging. But I do my best to try to, um, you know, uh, think about who I'm shooting with. It's never a situation where it's like, all right, I'm going to pull this big dick out and I'm just going to dominate with this thing. Yeah. Get out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's never it's never that. And the thing is, I, I know there are girls who think that it's like that because mm -hmm. there are girls that I'm on their no list just because of my size. You right. Know? Right. Oh, I know he's a nice guy and everything, but no way. You know, yeah. uh, I get that all the time. And, I'm, and in my head, I'm just like, hey, just give it a chance. You never know. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know, a lot of times, fans request me with girls, and I never say anything. Even though I'm active on social media and everything, but I never really engage a whole lot. But why don't you shoot with this one or that one? And in my head, I'm like, she's never gonna shoot with me. Yeah. You know, it's not happening. You guys keep hoping for it, but yeah. and I wish that wasn't the case. So it, it is. It could be detrimental. 
to a certain degree, yeah. having this size. But for the girls who I've shot with multiple times, who totally get it and get me as a person, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just have nothing but respect for that. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I have, so I have some questions here from my sure. Patreon members. Um, so Adrian asks, uh, okay. how often have you had a scene partner unable to handle your size? Like, have you ever done a scene with someone and they tried and yes. it just didn't work? I did. I did, actually. That has happened um, on more than one occasion, uh, but not that many. Not as many as people would think. Um, I, I would say, like, maybe three or four times. And you've done probably hundreds of scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, again, my number scenes versus a lot of other guys, you know, pales in comparison, you know, because I just, I've always, once I got back in, I would always just be, uh, you know, um, stuck with that one person for the most part that I was shooting for, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was the guys in Miami, whether it was um, when I was shooting for uh, Evil Angel a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, up until with Jules. So it was always like one spot to the, you know, uh, there was a little period where, where it was overlapping and I was shooting for multiple, but that didn't last too long. So, um, so yeah. Um, it has happened. It has, yeah. yeah. So you've been uh, contracted with Jules Jordan for a while now. Um, and like, why did you decide to sign a contract? How is that going? Do you ever think that you would want to work with other people again, or are you just happy where you're at? Well, there's a couple things working there with Jules Jordan. Um, I was a fan of his stuff because um, he shot uh, Lexington Steele, who was um, one of the, not one of, he was the guy who I looked at as like, damn, man, this guy's amazing, man. This guy's like a black superhero in porn, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I want to be like that, you yeah. know? So um, I saw the work that he did with, with, with uh, Jules, and I would always kind of envision, and of course this is way before I was even had anything to do with the industry, but like, man, I could see that. Like, I remember he did a few scenes with, um, that, that I used to watch when I was just like a fan with uh, Ryan Connor and Lex. And I was like, man, that's, that's it, man. You know, he's walking down the stairs in his sexy outfit, and he's waiting down there with the big dick ready to go. I'm like, Damn. So I had always wanted to shoot for him, but it was just kind of like, if it works out, it works out. You know, if, if it doesn't, it doesn't. And when I uh, came back, I remember people would mention him and it was almost as if it was bound, it was inevitable that it was going to happen. And I was just like, okay, if it does, great. And so it happened. And I like it. I like him. He's a yeah, solid dude. Uh, I think he's one of the best, if not the best, at doing it. Uh, his shoots, his sets are, are great, um, pretty easy. Um, uh, it's just fun. So um, I stuck with it, you know. And, um, yeah, no, I, I, I enjoy it still to this day. Well, we were talking earlier about how, you know, you don't want to perform, like, every single day. Right. And, like, being contracted with Jules is great because, you know, you don't, you're not being right. pressured to shoot every day. And, and also you have your only fans, which, True. you know, is I'm sure doing quite well. Yes. So yeah. Tell us a little bit about, um, why you choose to not work as often as you probably could. Well, you know what, especially at this stage of the ball game in my life, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a young guy anymore. Um, I'm getting older, but I, I still have a lot of gas in the tank. So my thing is kind of like my motto is, uh, less is more at this point, you know what I mean? And I never really did want to be the everyday kind of guy here and there and then over there, then back to there. And um, I always kind of just wanted to pick a spot and kind of, you know, settle in. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I, his pace, the, the, the pace that I'm at right now is pretty much what I've always wanted, you know, yeah. which is really at my own pace, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, you can definitely get burned out. I mean, especially oh as male talent. I mean, you yes. have to do a lot of work. Oh yeah. No, there, there's no, Holly, there's no shame in my game at, admit, <laughs> at admitting I am not that guy anymore. You know, I still got it in me to perform at a high level, but I have to, 
I almost equate it to, I don't know how much of a sports fan you are, but I almost equate it to like Michael Jordan when he came in and he was dunking on everybody and all these crazy moves going to the rim. And as he got older, he he had to transition his game. Mm -hmm. You know, he couldn't, you know, take on these seven foot guys anymore. Mm -hmm. You had to kind of develop that uh, sweet outside jumper. So I kind of look at it as like now I'm developing my jumper from the outside. Yeah. And that's the best way I could put it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned Lexington Steel as being somebody that you looked up to before you got into the industry. So when you first, when you finally started working in porn and you met him, um, was there any like guidance that he gave you? Any advice that he gave you? Um, Yes. But, you know, he was just, just sitting there and and listening to him talk. I mean, everything he said, I kind of, you know, put it in the mental storage locker and, and, and soaked it all in because um, I obviously knew he'd been there, done that, done it well. So, um, yeah, a lot of the things he said to me, I retained. And um, that, w- that was just a really good, fun, solid day. I think I spent like almost five hours with him. And then I saw him a couple times after that. But that initial time of meeting him, a guy who... And I told him, I said, man, dude, when we were sitting there talking. I said, man, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be sitting here. And he started laughing. I said, I'm dead serious. <laughs> you know, amazing. I'm, I'm not joking. So, um, yeah, no, that was a great, um, great experience. And again, I just thought he was still do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what did, now that you, you know, I think we could consider you a veteran now in mm-hmm. the industry. You've done hundreds of, if not probably thousands of scenes. What advice would you give to guys trying to get into the industry or new performers? Is there anything that you wish you had done differently at the beginning of your career? No, because see, I was, I was on that, that side of the fence that I wasn't ready for it. And I, and it's just a whole different ball game now versus years ago when they get into porn, it was almost kind of like you had to know somebody who knew someone who knew that person, you know, to, to get connected. Whereas now, I mean, every day, I get messages, man, I want to get in, I want to get in. And I'm like, there's never been an easier time to get in than now. Well, well, what do you mean? I said, well, the door is wide open. I'm like, you know, technology is finally caught up. You got a phone, you know, you, you do your thing, you know, try and shoot some good stuff. And I said, and there you have it. It's not really all about um, who you know, you know, it's really all about what you can do how you want to do it. You know, that whole independence thing, I think is more prevalent now than ever. It's just wide open now. So I just tell them when they ask me, um, it's basically like, look, go for yours, do your thing. Um, Get active on social media. Um, You know, you got to get some hustle in you and make it happen, you know, because that's really, I think where it's at right now or where it's going. Right. right. I I think so. Yeah. And, and, we were also discussing earlier, you know, platforms like OnlyFans has really right. enabled people to kind of create their own content and manage their own career in a way that never existed before. Yeah, I'll say this. You know, I was late to the OnlyFans thing. Um, I remember uh, when I shot for evil, somebody there used to always tell me, you got to get going with this OnlyFans. And I was like, what do you mean this only? I was like, what is that? You know, this platform, you do content. And I remember I was like, I'm not that guy, you know? I'm like, I don't got time for that. That's a waste of my time. And she would always ask me, did you start it yet? Did you? I'd go, no way. Why do you keep asking? Because you're missing out. And uh, that went on for a long time. And then I just like really reluctantly started it. And it started out slow. And I said, ah, just like I thought, a waste of my time. But it was a thing where the more I applied myself to it, the more things started to happen. Mm -hmm. And then what initially turned out as something that I've laughed at turned out to be the thing that really changed my life. I'm not going to say solely, but I'd be lying if I was to sit here and say to you, it didn't impact, you know, me in a heavy way. Yeah. So, which is why, like, I put most of my attention now into into that, you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't just look at it as something on the side anymore. Now it's like the main course. Yeah. And you know, that's been going great. 
What kind of stuff are you shooting on your OnlyFans? Is it mostly POV or? Yeah, well, you know, it's all been a process, you know. I, I started out really just trying to find my way. It was like a trial and error kind of thing. And then as that was going on, the vision started coming to me that, you know what, man, you could turn this thing into anything you want it to be uh, at this point. So my vision was to just try to give my fans who subscribe, you know, um, high quality stuff, but not, I don't want it to look like something I just shot for jewels, you know, mm -hmm. which of course that option is, is there. And I know a lot of people shoot their stuff and they get people to kind of, they want that look, you know, I really want to still kind of keep the feel to it. Like I'm mainly doing it mm -hmm. with a little bit of help, which is what I'm doing now. I get a yeah. little bit of help on the side, but, um, it's, high quality you know it looks good um and people are signing up left and right still so you know thank thankful for that yeah so keep keep doing what you're doing it just yeah that, that that's really it and and i feel like i could do this for a while yeah, <laughs> yeah. and i want to do it that's the thing it's like it's fun you know like i i'm not saying what i do on set isn't fun that's still fun too but um doing that you know this just shooting especially with people that i i, I want to shoot with and we kind of you know we'll put our heads together well what do you what do you want to do okay i don't know you know we'll interact and you know these are all things that you can't do on a set you know yeah it's i mean I, I think the autonomy that you have you know creating your own content and then you probably the girls are more inspired because they're gonna like co-own it because i assuming you guys are doing some kind of content share sure so then like they're more invested in it as sure. well mm -hmm. which i think is a totally different kind totally. of dynamic than just being on set where you're being paid a day rate and then somebody else owns sure. the content mm -hmm. you don't get residuals that kind of thing exactly and again i'm not by any stretch knocking that whole angle I think that's always, I don't think that's going anywhere. I think that's always going to be here. But I think just for the, the independent guy or gal, like there's never been a better time than now. Yeah. And it's nice to have a mix of both if that's what you like. Because, you know, we were talking about that. Some people really like going on set and, yeah. you know, having a whole like team to shoot you. You don't really have to think about anything. It's also good to get like your name out there, get on these sites with a lot of traffic. But then also to have your, your thing on the side, I think it's a nice blend, which I feel like makes, honestly, I feel like it makes the industry as a whole kind of like more healthy Sure. because people now have control right. over their careers and their choices in a way that they right. didn't have before. Did not have And it. so I feel like people are, um, it's happening less often that people are being talked into or pressured into doing something they don't want to do right. because they feel like they're financially trapped because, oh, if I don't do this, I don't make this money and I really need this money mm -hmm. to make my rent. So I'm going to do a scene that I'm not really ready right. for and then I'm going to regret it. Sure. I feel like there's less of that now. Mm -hmm. which totally. Which is just better for everybody. I think so. You know, I mean, I could see some of the studio guys maybe initially when this whole thing, you know, kind of came to the surface, maybe kind of being like, well, damn it, you know, um, yeah. that's great. You know, what the hell is this? But... Again, I think there's always going to be that guy or gal that wants to perform, you know, in that arena. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because of all the things that come with that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, you know, doing any, uh, winning any awards for my content, you know? And of course, with porn, that, that all comes, you know, the, 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 the fame, you know, mm -hmm. the notoriety and all that good stuff. So I totally understand and get that angle. Um, but... At the same time, I also get the angle of, you know what, I've been doing that for so long, I want to be able to do my own thing at my own pace, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. I could see it from both sides. Yeah, definitely. So, I want to talk a little bit more about, like, your actual performance. Um, how do you, do you do anything to prepare for scenes? I know some guys have a whole, like, I know Charles Dara has a whole, like, ritual that he does, like, before a scene. Do you do anything special to prepare for a scene, or you just walk into it? I, I you know, I don't. It's just, it's just all mental uh, with me. Like, I really just try to envision, it's, especially if it's somebody I haven't, um, you know, shot with. I just try to envision how it's going to go, and I try to get myself mentally in tune with just what's going to go on that day, how it's going to go on. You know what I mean? That, it's just a mental thing for me as far as the, the prep going into it. Um, I don't really have too much of a ritual. 
Um, but it's just like now that I'm older, definitely a, a, a solid night's sleep. <laughs> definitely have your rest and, um, you know, um, eat something light in the morning and away you go. That's yeah. pretty much it for me. What do you do if you come on set and you're just not like vibing with the girl or you're not attracted to the girl or you just feel like, I don't know, there's some kind of tension there. Like, how do you still follow through? Well, you know something? I've, I've been fortunate. I think because going back to the whole size thing, because the, the dick size is such a, a huge thing, um, with all the, the people that I've shot for, they've always, whether it was evil or whoever, um, they've always um, provided me with good um, you know, um, partners, performers mm -hmm. to shoot with. And I've never had that. I think early on, uh, during that first run, 2008, 2009, and I'm like in the middle of the ocean, with no life jacket, I'm sitting there struggling, trying to get every, and the girl's like, I'm looking at her watch, and I'm like, I need some help. Yeah. <laughs> help me out over here. Yeah. You know? uh, so <laughs> those, those early days. Um, but th since when I, uh, when I came back, no, I've never had a situation where I've had to deal with somebody who was like difficult or, um, just those few, when we go back to the, the, the ones that uh, couldn't take it, mm -hmm. those I kind of wish I could take back and I wish they worked out. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because you always want to, you know, at the end of the day, go, man, wasn't that great? That was a great scene. Everybody has a good time. And when that kind of thing happens, that's not the case, you know? Yeah. Do you find that because of like the status that you're at now, I mean, you're one of the top um, male performers out there do you think that you are now really just getting like the more experienced girls casted with you? I mean, I know obviously for your OnlyFans, you get to choose who you want to work with, but in terms of like maybe the people that Jules picks, because I know he's probably pretty selective. Yes. So you're not getting like brand new girls where it's like right. their second scene ever and they right. don't know what they're doing and they're right. a little bit like yeah. intimidated. Are you finding that you're just getting like really solid experienced performers? So it's yes. easier. Yes, and, and you know something, that's kind of like what I'm going for. I mean, he definitely uh, does his best to make sure who he's picking, uh, I don't know if I want to say has been vetted, so to speak, but is somebody who, um, you know, can kind of come into the situation and go, you know what, um, we're going to make this happen, and we're going to have a good time, and this and that, um, you know, but I've, um, the problem I have is there are a lot of girls I haven't shot with who hit me up to shoot stuff, and I'm like, you know, this has a lot of potential, but you're just not sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, all the questions you were asking me, I was thinking about, you know, the, the, the pro stuff that I shot, whereas with content, it's different. You know, you don't, I don't know for sure. If, you know, a girl hit me up, hey, I'm going to be in town. You want to shoot some stuff? And I'm like, well, you think you'll be all right to do it? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, you know, worst case scenario in a situation like that, we could always turn it into just... We could always turn it into just like a, okay. my bad, into just like a um a a blowjob situation mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, no. Um, to answer it, yeah, no. He's he he's and people who I've shot for have always done a really good job of, you know, having somebody that I'll shoot with that knows what they're in for. Right. <laughs> I don't mean to sound that in an ominous <laughs> way. <laughs> you know. I mean, there there is like a quality to the scenes that I've seen, you know, Jules put out and other people. And it's like Gianna Dior takes on oh, dread. Right, right. It's like this, you know, culmination of like, can she do it? Well, <laughs> you know, you, you have these girls nowadays, whether it's uh, Gianna or Emily, or just, I, I could just go down the line that you would think, wow, can she handle it? And it's like, oh, yes, she can. <laughs> she, and she can handle it well, you know? Yeah. So I, I remember that used to, like, blow me away. But, you know, it's just like a whole another level in porn, you know? Yeah. Like, again, it, that whole thing, of, you see a picture of a girl, there's no way she's going to be able to take that. And then she does. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you, you guys are all sexual athletes. Yes. You're experienced. And the female vagina can do amazing things. I had a baby, I can tell you straight up that like the amazing things can come in or out of that but i'll tell you something place. though holly i'll throw this in <gasps> there are quite a few girls that will only shoot anal with me you know yes i know isn't that so interesting people think that's 
strange, but I know right. quite a few girls who actually anal is easier for them yes. than vaginal. Right. Yeah. There's so many girls uh, on the OnlyFans, they go, man, why didn't you fuck her in the pussy? I said, well, she would, did not want to go down that street, you know, and they, th they think it's like me. Like, look, I love anal, yeah. but... I'm like, look, if a girl says, hey, your dick's not going anywhere near my pussy, what, what am I going to do? You know, sit there and try and, you know, bargain with her? You know, yeah. that's it. You know, yeah. it's done. <laughs> so, so, um, so I get a lot of that. And there's always this, you know, the explanation of, well, you know, the asshole stretches and it, it could accommodate the dick better. And I'm like, okay, that works for me. So, yeah, no, pussy is, yeah, it's not always a given that, you know, it, it, it works that way with me. So, right. So, I know that, you know, we don't want to leave anybody out, but do you right. have any, like, top favorite girls that you like to work with? Oh, man. I, I, there's no way I could name just one, but... Um, you know, like, five. Like, five? And acknowledge that you probably left out, like, oh. another 20, that you're very sorry that you didn't name. I actually hate this question. People ask me this question because... There's so many performers that I just adore, and I always like have to leave somebody out who I love. So I'm sorry to. Put well, this I'll tell you what. You. It would be tough to even name a few. I'll tell you one who, and I just, I just told her this. We, I was talking to her on the phone uh, about a week ago, and if there was one that I've shot with that I would have to say is like my the ultimate challenge every time I shoot with her. I always just feel like it's a whole new deal. Angela White. I knew you were going to say that. Did you know? Did you? Yeah, what, were you thinking? A hundred fucking percent. In my really? Head. I'm like, he's going to say Angela White. He's going to yeah. say Angela White. Angela White. We actually have this joke. Um, and yeah, Angela's, Angela's like everybody's favorite. She's yeah. so amazing. And she actually listens to this podcast, which is funny. But I actually have this joke that I should rename my podcast called Everyone Loves Angela White. <laughs> because right. everybody who comes on here yeah. talks about how much they love Angela White. And she's almost everybody's favorite. So. Yeah. Not surprised at all. Yeah, no. I mean, I, and, I, and I don't even have to think about it too hard. I mean, because she's one of those just like, it's like, like a, just a freak of nature of mm -hmm. just like, okay, my ass, you can have it. My pussy, you can have it. I'm going to suck the hell out of your dick. We're going to do it. And I just, I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, like mind blowing. So from the first time I shot with her and I shot uh, scenes with her on a pro level, I've shot scenes with her content each time. I always look at it as a new challenge, mm -hmm. you know, that not saying like, oh, man, I want I want to win this. It's not that. But she performs on such a high level that in my mind, I, I'm always like, I got to match that. Yeah, I got to. I, I can't have her chew me up and spit me out. Not saying that, you know, <laughs> but, you know, I got to really. So it's always just like clash with her and i can't say that for i mean I've, there are other performers that i can really go all out with whether it's like abigail mack or emily willis um adriana chechik you know girls you could just really go all out with but um but angela's she yeah she's the she's the one there's something really magnetic about her and the way that she performs because you see it it's like I mean, she really loves her yeah. job and she right. really kind of like, I don't know, drinks in whoever she's working. You see it yeah. in her eyes, like the way that she locks eyes with right. them and like she just wants to consume you. Right. And she's like that with everybody that wow. I've shot her with. You know what I mean? It's not like I like this person more than this person. Like she is invested. And it, it it's for her, it's like more, I mean, obviously she's incredibly successful. She's super professional, yes. but there's something else there too. Like, this really is like the perfect job for her. It's right. just like, and then, you know, behind the scenes, she's just like so oh, yeah. Yeah, lovely yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, so intelligent sure. right. and so on top of it yes. and so communicative and also like so humble. I mean, yeah. she's probably like the number one porn star in the world and y you would never know it talking to her. She's just, right. she's exactly the same as she was when she first started. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, no, she's she's phenomenal. I mean, I, I totally get all the accolades, the awards. She's more than deserving of all of it. You she, know what I mean? Yeah, she yeah. absolutely deserves like every single award that she gets. She's incredible. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just talking about it. I'm looking we're, we're gonna shoot some stuff uh in um January and I'm counting it down, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
always get excited to shoot with her. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's always a good day with Angela. Absolutely. Um, okay, so before we wrap up, I do have a yeah. couple more questions from my Patreon members okay. that we didn't get to, and I just want to make sure I cover these because, of course, if you're a member of my Patreon, you get to ask questions of the guest, and yes. I want to make sure I get to it. Uh, so the first one is actually two. Okay. It's from Kevin, but he says, you know him as Brother K. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know. I know who we're He's talking like, about. He's like, he'll know who I'm, who uh, I am. And I was like, okay. Uh, I know. Uh, so he says, uh, near 100 scenes this year. Damn, could you have envisioned this in 2016 before you got back with Hush Studios? Jeez, this guy knows my bio better than me. <laughs> Maybe you should be like your publicist. I'm telling you, <laughs> I almost want to give him a job. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Th- it was. Did I envision? Just, I guess, did you envision, like, your success? Like, back in 2016, did you imagine no. that you would be okay. where you were? And that today? is a good question. Um, okay, good question. Um, no, I didn't. I was just hoping when I got back in, um, I was just hoping to kind of find a way to just help me live a better life, to be honest with you. That definitely wasn't a thing of, I'm getting back into this thing, and I'm going to conquer, or not so much conquer, but I'm going to do this, that I was just hoping to get in and fit in and just get into the rotation. Mm -hmm. That's all I was hoping for. So the fact that things have turned out the way they have and, you know, I've kind of accumulated this base and, and, you know, people hold me in this high regard is is great. He has a second question. I knew he would. Uh, (laughs) Out of your scenes this year... Who would you say were your most memorable? I kind of already asked you this question, but do you have a couple of scenes in particular that you think people should check out? Well, um, I t- I, see, I got I to gotta think on that. That's one of those I got to think on. Um, that's a tough one to answer because there are quite a few, but I I can't really. That's 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 a tough one. I think I, we can probably safely say anything with Angela White. Any, well, anything with Angela, <laughs> yes, definitely. And which, which by the way, um, what's coming up with her in January is something I've really... And actually, this would probably tie into that question. Um, shooting uh, what's going to be pretty big, something with Angela and Savannah Bond. So the two uh, beautiful Aussies paired with me for the first time. That is going to be something to count down. Oh, so yeah. There was one to kind of tie in, you know, to that. That'll be memorable. But then I've had some memorable uh, pro shoots. I don't want to leave that out, you know. Um, I just shot uh, round two uh, with um, Gianna Dior for Jules, and that was really a lot of fun, um, as well as some others on the pro level. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, Ron Lambert uh, says, this may seem like a really stupid question, but is he able to wear underwear? <laughs> Does he catch women staring even at him even when he has clothes on? You know, the funny thing is, a lot of people think that even when I just, like, roll out of bed, the, the dick, like, rolls off the side of the bed and hit, <laughs> you know, hits the ground. You know, I'm like, that's not, I'm like it's not the reality of it all. Uh, you know, when it's kind of like in its, you know, sleep mode, if you will, um, it's regular. There's nothing, nothing to it. Now, uh, a quick, 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 uh, quick funny story was when I, a couple of years ago, when I was still down in Miami and I decided to uh, get help from this personal trainer who happened to be a female and she was very attractive and she had me doing something. You already know where this is going. She had me doing something where I was sitting down and I just had these shorts on with boxers. That's the big mistake, the boxers, <laughs> with me, you know. Uh, usually I go with the, the tighties because right. let's, let's just say I st- start getting a semi. Forget about a, a raging hard on, but let's just say a semi. The tighties will help the, help the cause. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, kind of keep, keep it. Keep you tied down a little bit. Keep you tied down a little bit. Right. Boxers, you don't have a shot in hell. <laughs> so I got the bo- <laughs> I got the boxers on, and she had me doing something in a position where, like, my legs were back, and as I, my legs were back, I felt my dick kind of roll over on my leg, and that, and throughout my history, that means trouble as far as <laughs> what's coming. So I knew it was coming, but I couldn't do anything about it. You know what I mean? I couldn't just go, hey, let's stop, let's. So it just started happening. <laughs> and then it was like, you remember the, the Incredible Hulk when David Banner, he, the shirt rips out and everything? 
all of a sudden my shorts just have this massive <laughs> bulge, you know, and I'm kind of like trying to hide it. So it was very, and she's looking and she's like, oh, you know, looking away. And I was like, oh shit. So yeah. Did that you happen? Did either of you acknowledge this that this was happening? No way. I did my best to try to like cover it up, and she kept turning her head, and I was just hoping for it to go down. You know, I'm like, all right, <laughs> you know, got deep breaths. You know. Wow. Did that you ever happened. go back to her again? I, I think I think I did like one or two other times. It was a short-lived uh, personal trainer experience. Right. But that I'll never forget because that was like the one and only time that that really happened. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Oh my God, that's really great. Um, okay, my next question is yep. from Dave W. Uh, he says, I've got a hypothetical question for you. If you could change the size of your penis, would you do it? Would you make it bigger or would you make it smaller? That's a good question. Um, well, no. I would keep it as it is now because, I mean, there are girls that won't, not a lot, but there are a few girls that won't shoot with me because of the size. And I mean, I just... I could, I'll live with it. You know what I mean? I mean, I, it's unfortunate because I'd love to shoot with as many girls um, as possible without them having any, um, you know, that, that whole apprehensive feeling. I don't think I could take it. So, but that being said, for uh, the girls that I have shot with and, then, and I'm continuing to shoot with, I'll, I'm happy keeping it as is. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Because, look, I mean, I have a feeling that you never know at some point some new guy could roll up and he can, you know, have this massive penis and, you know, who knows? You never know. And you then know? you're only like the second biggest dick in porn. Right. Because, right. <laughs> you, you know, when I got in, the guy who was on my radar was a Mandingo. Yeah. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. And it was like him and me and really nobody else, you know? Everybody else was kind of looking up. Um I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So he's gone. And now there are some new guys that have come in that are pretty sizable. So for me to still have this, the, the title, I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm humbled by it. And, you know, hopefully it'll last for a long time. You know? Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask if you know about like what I consider to be one of the best jokes of quarantine that actually another one of my guests brought up. It was pretty funny. Do you remember when, um, you know, the whole, like, obviously the mask mandate came in and they were saying, like, social distancing, six feet apart, and then, like, work shut down. And then Kieran Lee made that great oh, joke God. about, like, how the only person who can work in porn now is oh, Dredd yeah. because he's the only one you can have sex with and still be six feet apart from. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, Kieran. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, he's a great guy. Every time I see him, he's always got something funny to say, something oh, yeah. along those lines, you know what I yeah. mean? But, I, yeah, I do remember that. That was hysterical. Yeah, Kieran's mm -hmm. a good guy. Mm -hmm. Jared, thank you so much for coming on. I'm sorry it's so cold it's in short. here. It's too short. <laughs> Our heater broke. I know. Well, you have to come back again, and um, maybe it'll be warmer in here. Sounds good to me. Uh, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Give us all your plugs. Okay. Well, uh, on Twitter, uh, that would be Dread Triple X. Um, of course, the OnlyFans, pretty easy. Uh, OnlyFans.com slash Dread Triple X. Uh, on Instagram, which I just got a new one. But me, of all people, they shut it down, I, you know, for reasons unknown. So I had to start all over again. But that would be um, Devastate Dread on Instagram. Devastate Dread. And um, that's pretty much it. And, you know, see, see all my stuff, uh, you know, on Jules Jordan video. And um, that's pretty much it. Awesome. And then you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter, of course, at Holly Randall. If you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered, where you can see interviews like this live as they happen. Thank you guys so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. Going into a sex store can be overwhelming. You may spend hours browsing the shelves, only to realize that you came home with stuff that you can't really use. Or maybe you forgot like one crucial ingredient. This is why Like a Kitten is so amazing because they let you build your own box so you can kind of choose your own adventure. You get to choose one item out of each of their six categories, toys, beauty products, lubes and cleansers, games, sexy accessories, and lingerie. 
Go to likeakitten.com slash holly or use code holly at checkout or click the link in the episode's description.